Hey there crypto enthusiasts, today we're tackling a huge topic, DeFi or decentralized finance. You've probably heard about it, but what exactly is it and why does it matter? How can it change the way we handle money? Stick around because we are starting a new series of educational videos on DeFi with Vladimir Smirkis. Let's get started. Hello everyone dear friends, this is Vladimir Smirkis and today we will talk about decentralized finance also known as DeFi which promises to revolutionize our lives. Are the things that are happening in today's world of blockchain really that important? And what does the term DeFi actually mean? Let's try to figure it out in this video. So let's dive in. So what is DeFi? The definition is very simple. Decentralized finance. It is a blockchain based technology that allows to simplify regular financial operations, but with cryptocurrencies, without the use of any intermediaries, such as banks, for example, and so on. In the world of DeFi, users can interact with each other using various different protocols, transfer funds, exchange one cryptocurrency for another, borrow and do all this honestly and transparently and fairly as the great blockchain intended. In order to understand decentralized finance or DeFi, we need to comprehend what problems exist in the financial market. The first and the biggest problem is that there are a huge number of intermediaries, both good intermediaries and bad ones, but nevertheless, they are intermediaries. Intermediaries take up our time, intermediaries cost money, and intermediaries prevent us from quickly performing certain operations or transactions. In order to get a loan, for example, we go to banks. Banks take money from some people, give it to other people, and charge a significant fee for this service. Consequently, a loan becomes more expensive for us. Or, in order to buy any security, we need to go to a broker. The broker will buy that security from the issuing company, hold it, and allow us to purchase that security with a small but necessary markup or a small percentage fee that we'll have to pay for this transaction. Besides these kinds of intermediaries, financial intermediaries that supposedly help us kind of make our life better, there are also regulatory intermediaries. Every country has its own rules by which the economy operates, by which economic entities and financial organizations operate. In some places, certain things can be done, while in others, they are prohibited. In some places, trade margin products futures are allowed, in others, you can use trade options, and in some places, all these things are prohibited. In general, we face a wide range of significant restrictions, and these restrictions seem to be not entirely democratic, at least not always democratic, and something needs to be done about them. And this is what the great blockchain teaches us and leads us to. It says that intermediaries should be eliminated, intermediaries should not be paid, intermediaries slow down and make transactions of any kind of asset significantly more expensive. So what are the options? Let's talk about it. The idea of DeFi is to remove all intermediaries so that we can interact directly with each other. For example, there are decentralized exchanges. Decentralized exchanges do not hold your money. Decentralized exchanges allow you to connect your wallet to the exchange and another person can also connect to the exchange. If you are selling an asset and someone else is buying, a decentralized exchange acts as a hub, a protocol for executing this transaction, to find a large number of sellers and buyers so that transactions can occur between them. And accordingly, it also allows people who are ready to invest in liquidity pools to earn money, for example, by depositing their funds. That happens because just like any exchange point, what does this exchange point need? It needs a certain amount, for instance, of either rubles or euros and a certain amount of dollars or other currencies, such as Japanese yen. So it is necessary for the exchange to have both components in order to ensure that the system functions properly and those who invest their money into this system earn interest on it, which the centralized protocol takes on. Therefore, all parties can benefit here. And as a rule, the percentage compared to banks, credit organizations or centralized exchanges is significantly lower. But it doesn't work with centralized exchanges in the cryptocurrency environment because on DEX decentralized exchanges, we work with on-chain transactions. That's that's why when you need, for example, to transfer your Ethereum to the blockchain and to another person, this can cost now about $10 as we have already mentioned in some previous videos. At the same time, centralized exchanges allow transactions to be much cheaper because when you trade with each other, the funds simply do not move. They remain within the exchange and the exchange charges a significantly lower commission without moving the money at all. In general, there are both pros and cons to this as usual. In addition to decentralized exchanges, as an example of DeFi products, there are non-custodial protocols for getting loans, such as Aave or Compound, where you can lend your Bitcoin or Ethereum, and another person can borrow it and pay a certain percentage for it. 
And again, compared to traditional financial organizations, this percentage will be significantly lower because these protocols essentially allow people to interact directly with each other, taking a very small percentage compared to the greedy and large centralized organizations. There are also protocols for derivatives, such as Synthetix or Bondbridge, for example, where you can issue a derivative for any asset. And again, if futures, for example, for classic securities can be issued by a limited range of organizations and are subject to significant censorship by the regulator, here everything is much simpler. You need to connect to the system, issue a derivative, and if there is demand and liquidity for it, it just works. All right, crypto explorers, stay tuned for the next videos where we'll dive deeper into more exciting aspects of DeFi. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated.